Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm Richard and this is Lap of the World. We're done kind of working on the Gallardo for a moment, so I thought I would take an opportunity to come out here and play with it at yet another East Tennessee Region SCCA Autocross. We are currently uh, standing in the uh, figurative and literal shadow of Bristol Motor Speedway up here in the background. Uh, very famous, one of the, probably one of the, I think maybe the only short, is it the only uh, short track left on the NASCAR circuit right now? I don't know. But it's uh, one of very few short tracks left on the NASCAR circuit. Uh, we are, of course, not using the, uh, the, <laughs> the bowl of an oval that they have inside, but rather we're using the very capacious parking lot outside, which is an, an awesome venue for autocross. And, uh, you know, big thanks to Bristol, uh, not officially on behalf of, but on behalf of someone who enjoys these events. Uh, we do appreciate the hospitality and letting us, uh, letting everybody out here to use the lot. But uh, <laughs> I've gotten through tech, I'm checked in. So uh, let's go take a look at today's course and uh, we'll see how bad I can get beaten by a Miata. Today's course begins with a relatively fast start that lets you get up ahead of steam on the way downhill into a slightly off-camber entry to a decreasing slalom that eventually terminates into a double apex U-turn that sends you back uphill through what was effectively a slightly offset slalom followed by another double apex switchback. You then carry as much speed as you dare through a fast right leading downhill into another slalom the last zag of which doubles as a late apex entry into the fastest part of the course. An uphill on camber opening turn leads into a braking zone for a fast but slippery sweeper. That sweeper terminates into a two cone what I'll call a faux slalom that really just redirects you left into a fast as you dare right hand shoot. An unintentional water feature then comes into play and adds some difficulty to what was already probably a tricky section, what I would describe as a high amplitude offset slalom that needed you to drop speed and apex the second cone pair in the element late enough to not get pinched into the final slalom and finishing gate. Credit to the course designer, it was not painful to drive and felt like it had a decent balance between fast and technical. But that's enough walking, let's go drive it. So with a couple of runs in the book, and yeah, it's it's kind of hot outside. Um, still has a little bit of a hang up at 3,500, 4,000 RPM. Uh, just before it gets kind of on its cam and on the power band, it seems to have a little bit of kind of a hole there. So it'll accelerate, and I actually found a way I can drive around it. If, I'm, if I add the throttle more smoothly, rather than going full wide open throttle, it doesn't seem to stumble as much for whatever reason. Uh, I considered kind of narrating that in a run, and I'll first run I had a passenger, and Luke, if you're watching this, I hope you had a good time, but um, <laughs> second run, I was trying to kind of get my head around it, so we'll see how this goes, but uh, I haven't been keeping track of where I am in class, probably dead last, but uh, maybe I'll update that after the next run, so uh, <laughs> let's get back out there. All right, guys, we're going into run three today. Now, if I were driving in the pro class or at a national event, this would be the one that counts because this would be the last one that I would get. In our case, we're going to get several more and they will all count in my case because I'm running kind of a, an open class that uh, doesn't stick to the three-run rule. 
but for right now, we are currently racing, I believe, for second place here. My friend uh, Bradley again in his the flying gas can of a supercharged Elise. Good six seconds clear of everybody in our class at the moment. Um, however, I am within like a second and a half of second place. But the problem is, so are about two or three other people at this point. The uh, the midfield is tight, as they would say in F1, which this definitely isn't. But uh, <laughs> I think the main thing I need to do is clean it up. So I've got the uh, the enthusiasm is there. I'm uh, I've been able to kind of drive around the the car's uh, hiccups a little bit. The problem is I've still gotten uh, out of shape a couple of places, and uh, you know kind of skidded away some uh, some time there. So I think if I can get a good solid just a, a clean and tidy run, then uh, that that should do me a favor as far as the class standings for today. But. Uh, again, I'm going to see if I can continue to drive around whatever that little hiccup that happens at, uh, you know, at that mid RPM. Uh, you know, I understand that, that you got to keep the car in its power band, but uh, <laughs> I only got so much room to work with here, guys. it took the safety stewards to inspect the course following that spectacular smokescreen deployed by a boxster, I wanted to reflect a bit on how fun it is to be able to come out on a day like this, enjoy driving, and see a host of really very diverse vehicles. Everything from the latest from the Porsche GT division to a sick tea bucket on fat slicks. SCCA's autocross format very nearly has something for everyone. Just look through the rule books and find a class that fits your appetite for modification. Taken seriously, autocross has launched many a motorsports career. At the same time though, casuals like me with class orphan cars can show up and run an unofficial catch-all class and still have some fun. Unsponsored SCCA plug dispensed with and course cleaned up, let's jump forward a bit to my seventh and fastest run of the day to see what I managed to put together in between complaining about torque holes and talking to people I hadn't seen in a while. Alright folks, well after seven runs I was exactly mediocre in class today, but uh, 
that's kind of expected. Uh, again, my friend Bradley and his Elise kind of ran off with everything, and then uh, several other Miate followed, and it's fine. I, I do feel like I need to apologize, though, a little bit. I feel like I probably complained a little bit too much through this video for somebody who has been out autocrossing a Lamborghini on a beautiful summer's day in Tennessee. Uh, <laughs> I am actually having fun out here and enjoying myself in spite of the occasional foible or hiccup from the car. Uh, more to come on that. I'm going to continue doing research and we'll keep you guys updated as to what's going on. Uh, really, I, it's kind of that I just refuse to acknowledge that that's how it's supposed to drive. And uh, really, I think the best way to figure that out, if you are watching this and you happen to have a 2004 or 2005 gated, ideally, Gallardo, uh, that you wouldn't mind me driving. And if you're in the southeastern region, uh, I'd like to make that happen if possible. Uh, nothing enthusiastic, just some like, you know, third gear pulls from 40 miles an hour just to kind of have a, uh, a baseline comparison for a well-kept car. Again, this one has a little bit of a storied past to, uh, you know, to balance against just to see like, am I crazy or is this just how they all are? and you have to keep it in that four to 8,000 RPM power band uh, to really get all of the beans, so to speak. But anyhow, uh, that my, uh, <laughs> that's a quandary for another day. But for now, uh, I'm gonna go get over here and work a uh, corner station and chase some cones so other people can go and have their fun because that's how this all works. You, uh, you do your runs and you get your play time and then you balance that out by uh, enabling other people to have theirs. Again, thanks to uh, ETRSCCA for a, uh, another, another very fun event, uh, a great outfit to come and run with. Uh, Bristol, probably a, um, a venue here as well. Thanks again to Bristol for hosting. Bristol is probably one of those autocross venues that is legitimately worth traveling for if you are a hardcore autocrosser. I mean, this was a 60 second course. Well, for me, it was a 60 second course. I think for the fastest people today, you might see somebody in the high 40s, but even that I doubt. I think uh, Bradley and his Lotus are usually in the conversation for FTD, and he was around a 54, I think. But that's a long autocross course. Uh, you know, if you've been around the sport, you know what I mean. But uh, yeah, definitely worth uh, worth coming down for to hang out either with the ETR crowd, which is a great group to run with, or at Bristol, which is an awesome venue. But with all of that said, uh, I hope you enjoyed joining me around again for just kind of another casual fun day out. Should have some actual uh, on-track content coming soon with the NSX. Uh, again, I'll keep you updated on that. <laughs> but uh, with all of that more to come caveat, uh, I will leave it there. Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, uh, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, comment if you have any suggestions about uh, what I should uh, maybe look at next with this car. And uh, until next time though, I will, uh, yeah, I'll be here. But uh, I'm Richard, this is Lap of the World, and I will see you guys all in the next video, if not at the track.